So you're a Habs fan and you want to follow how the prospects in the Laval Rocket are performing this season. Well, we've got a brand new show just for you. Hi, my name is Amy Johnson. I am with Rocket Sports Media and the Hockey News Montreal team site. And I am the lead Laval Rocket correspondent for Rocket Sports. I've been covering the Laval Rocket and before that, the St. John's Ice Caps as a credentialed journalist since 2015. And I am very excited to introduce you and welcome you to our brand new show here on our YouTube channel called Rocket Hockey Report. If you are new to the channel, I invite you to tap subscribe and check out our other shows that we do have on the channel. I also host a Montreal Canadiens related show every Thursday called Habs Hockey Report. And if you've been around the channel for a while, then you know that this would be the kind of second iteration of that, the Rocket Hockey Report. I'll be here every Tuesday bringing you the latest on the Laval Rocket, most primarily focusing on the Habs prospects playing for the Laval Rocket in the AHL. So today, like we're going to do every week, we're going to hit the Rocket Rewind where I take you through a quick overview of how the Laval Rocket performed last weekend and where they're at in the standings. Then we'll move along to a prospect breakdown where I give you the ups and the downs of how the prospects performed over the weekend, as well as give you my selection for the standout star of the prospects for last week. And then finally, we'll wrap up each week with the Laval look ahead, where I'll preview for you what they've got on the schedule this coming week. So let's kick things off with the Rocket Rewind. Last week was the season opener, not only for the Habs, but for the Laval Rocket as well. They opened their season at home at Place Bell with a back-to-back -back series against the Abbotsford Canucks. They played Friday night and a matinee on Saturday afternoon. Now, unfortunately, they did lose both of these games to the Abbotsford Canucks, uh, losing 7-4 to four in what was a bit of a barn burner on Friday night, and then also dropping Saturday's game 4-3. to three. Two losses aren't exactly the best way to start the season. However, there were some bright spots. Yoel Armia, remember he got sent down to Laval last week. Well, he actually opened the scoring for the Laval Rocket for the season, uh, scoring not only the, their first goal of the year, but he also went on to pot a second one as well on Friday night. In fact, he ended up uh, with uh, three points overall on the weekend. There was plenty of energy in the building, we all know how packed Place Bell can get and how passionate the Laval fans are. And so it was a great atmosphere. I'm not sure the fan base is expecting them to come out and struggle so much right off the bat. But quite honestly, we know that with such a young roster this year and so many prospects down in Laval, uh, wins are not always going to be easy because they are fully in that development mode for the Laval Rocket, trying to get as many of those hot prospects for the Montreal Canadiens ready to make the jump to the NHL, if not this year, then in the next year or two. So what did the lines look like for the weekend? I'm going to bring this to you every week because I think it's important for Habs fans to see for themselves how prospects are being deployed in the AHL lineup uh, because it's easy to say, yes, well, that player and that player and that player is playing down in the AHL, but you might not always be aware of where they're playing in the lineup. And so let's take a look first off for Friday night. Now, J.F. Uhl did change up his lineups night to night. Uh, guys who did stay in the lineup both nights mostly did move around, and then there are so many prospects that we did see a rotation from Friday night to Saturday afternoon of some guys getting in on Friday, some guys getting in on Saturday. So if we take a look at Friday night's lineup, you'll see Emil Heineman and Joshua Waugh on the wings for Philippe Maillet, um, which... I actually was quite surprised to see Maie get the uh, first line center position on, on opening night. Um, but Heinemann and Wild, you'll see, uh, they stayed in those positions uh, all weekend. Second line was Riley Kidney uh, with uh, Mitchell Stevens at center and Yoel Armia on the right wing. Third line of Sean Farrell, Brandon Zignac, and Leas Anderson. 
fourth line of Xavier Simeno, Lucas Quintada, and Gabriel Bork. On the back end, we had Matthias Norlander and Logan Mayu on the top pairing, followed by William Trudeau and Gustav Lindstrom, as well as Jaden Struble with Toby Paquette Bisson. Uh, now, Jakob Dobis started this game uh, with Strauss Mann backing up. However, Mann actually ended up coming in to relieve Jakob Dobis partway through the second period uh, when things got just a bit out of hand uh, due to some turnovers that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. And then I think it was probably already the expectation that Mann would start on Saturday on the less than 24 hour back to back. Uh, if we shift over then to Saturday afternoon, you'll see uh, uh, some. You'll see quite a few changes in the lineup. So Heinemann and Waugh still on the top line, except now they were centered by Mitchell Stevens. Sean Farrell moved up to the second line with Brana Zinyak and Yoel Armia. Uh, Jared Davidson slotted into the lineup on the third line with Philippe Maillet and Leas Anderson. Gabriel Bork moved over to the left wing, centered by Jan Mishak, who drew into the lineup, and Nathan Legare. And then on the defense, uh, Nikolai Bodan with Nick, uh, with Gustav Lindstrom on the top pairing. Jaden Struble with Logan Mayu on the second pairing. I love this pairing. That could be an absolutely dynamite second pairing. Uh, as well as Matthias Norlander with Toby Paquette Bisson. In fact, I would like to see Norlander Lindstrom on the top pairing, Struble Mayu on the second pairing and those two pairings kind of rotating back and forth between first pairing and second pairing. And then, as I said, uh, Strauss Mann starting in goal on the second day. So where does that leave Laval in the standings? Well, they're starting things off 0-2 on the season. That puts them last in the North Division, last in the Eastern Conference, and they are in a six-way tie for last place in the AHL. But it's way too early to be concentrating on where they're at at the standings. It's just two games. It was just opening weekend. And they've got three games on the slate coming up this week that we'll talk about in just a little bit. So not an ideal start. Uh, They had a decent power play kind of middle of the pack for the weekend. They were uh, three for 15 on the power play, sitting at about 20% success rate. Uh, but peak on the PK, they were shorthanded six times and only allowed one goal. So uh, about 83% on the, on the penalty kill over the weekend. And uh, we'll see if they can continue to improve on those special teams. All right, so you've got the numbers. Now let's uh, do a little bit of analysis. It's time for the prospect breakdown. In this segment, I'm always going to take kind of the good and the bad, giving you a bit of the positives and the negatives, places that need to be worked on. Let's start with the good. Uh, No, Yoel Armia is not a prospect for the Montreal Canadiens, but he is going to be good for the prospects. The way he came out this weekend and took command, I mean, he made the AHL look easy and he rightfully should do so. Um, If he can be a positive force, we remember how how much of a positive impact Carl Alsner had uh, the season that he had to spend a, de- a good deal of time with the Laval Rocket as well. And I think uh, we don't know yet how long Yoel Armia is going to be playing in the AHL, but I think for as long as he is there, he is going to have a very powerful, positive impact on the young players who are there because they're going to have a true NHLer right there with them on and off the ice every day. And they'll be able to sponge all of that information and, and guidance from him on how to be a pro, how to be an NHLer. NHLer. Joshua Waugh had a fantastic weekend. He's actually leading the team in points with two goals and two assists. Uh, Had 10 shots on goal by himself on Saturday afternoon. Um, Joshua Waugh absolutely looking like he is in a good position on that top line. And I think we're going to see a lot of great things from Joshua Waugh. Logan Mayu on the back end absolutely looked phenomenal as well. I really appreciated uh, Matthias Norlander was taken, uh, was upended in the corner by, by one of Abbotsford's players. And Logan Mayu absolutely stepped right up and went to bat for Matthias Norlander, um, dropped the gloves, very decisive uh, fight, but it, you know, much less about about the actual fight, but more that Logan Mayu was very quick to step in for one of his teammates who was uh, getting handled in a way that he didn't really appreciate. And so I thought that was a really great, uh, really great bit of character from Logan Mayu. So where did we see the struggles? Well, first of all, turnovers in the defensive zone. Boy, um, 
William Trudeau had a rough weekend, let me tell you. Uh, there were some turnovers by him that absolutely led to goals against, uh, but he wasn't the only one. Uh, there were a ton of turnovers in both of these games. I mean, Laval outshot their opponent in both games this weekend and ended up on the losing end of both. Uh, they certainly had the puck on their sticks, but they were giving it back to the Canucks much more often than they should have. So that's going to be something to look at. Um, goaltending, I'm not going to be too hard on goaltending. Goaltending wasn't great. I'm going to I'm gonna say that. Um, but they also, as I say, weren't getting a lot of help in front of them from the defense. Uh, but goaltending was a bit shaky. I am willing to be... Um, I'm not going to harp on that, and I'm not going to get too concerned about that. We've got young Jakob Dobis. That's... That's what Jakob Dobis is there to do. He's there to learn. It's going to take him some time to learn, uh, but he needs to be given the crease to make the mistakes and keep learning in real time in game action. So I'm not too concerned that the goaltending didn't look exceptionally strong. Um, it's going to come along. It's going to take a little bit of patience and that's okay. So each week during this segment, I'm going to pick out my standout star for the week. Keep in mind, this is going to be a standout star of prospects. This is the prospect breakdown segment. So for this assessment every week, for this selection, I'm solely looking at the Habs prospects on the Laval Rocket team, and I am picking the one who stood out the most in the best ways. And this week, my standout star has got to be Jaden Struble. He had an exceptionally strong weekend. Uh, we did see him move from the third pairing on Friday night to the second pairing on Saturday. Uh, with Logan Mayu, and he had, in even though they lost on Saturday in both games, he had a very strong defensive game. In fact, he helped set up one of Laval's goals, and I really thought Jaden Struble played a very, very strong game. He's my standout star this week. All right, now, finally, the Laval look ahead. What do they have on the calendar this week? They've got two more home games, believe it or not, starting the season with four consecutive games at Place Bell, where they welcome in this week a North Division rival, the Rochester Americans. That is the AHL affiliate of the Buffalo Sabres. They will be in town on Wednesday night at 7 p.m., and Friday night at 7 p.m. before Laval goes on their first road trip of the year. But it's a short one. They're just heading right down the highway to Belleville, well, they're well, where they will take on the Belleville Senators on Saturday night at 7 p.m. They, of course, are the AHL affiliate of the Ottawa Senators. Um, these two opponents, it'll be interesting to see how these three games go this weekend. First of all, all three games are against division opponents. So these are key points that they're going to need to, to, to lock into place. Rochester has been an interesting opponent for Laval over the years. Um, there are a lot of times that Laval kind of handles them easily. Other times that Rochester gives them a bit of, a bit of trouble. We'll see which version of the Rochester Americans shows up in Laval this week. Belleville, on the other hand, has really not only have these two teams become very bitter rivals expect a physical chippy game on saturday because the belleville senators and the laval rocket do not like one another and it's very apparent every time they play each other um, and i think part of that frustration for laval is that the belleville senators really know how to get under their skin and they know how to get the best of them and a lot of times particularly when they are playing at caa arena in belleville Belleville comes out as the winner in these games a lot of times. So this is going to be interesting to see how these matchups look. It'll set the tone early for both of these division rivals with how these first performances of the season go this week. Now, if you want even more coverage of the Laval Rocket, well, we have got that for you here at Rocket Sports. You will find all of our coverage for the Laval Rocket by going to the website down at the bottom of your screen, thn.com slash Montreal. That stands for the Hockey News. That's right. We are the sole content contributors for the Hockey News Montreal's team site, where not only can you find all of our Montreal Canadiens coverage, but all of our Laval Rocket coverage as well, uh, provided by myself 
myself and my colleague Chris G. Uh, we will have game recaps, extensive game recaps for you every night the Laval Rocket plays. And of course, follow us on Twitter at Rocket Sports, where you'll get live game updates and all of our Canadians coverage updates as well. So hey, if you're a Habs fan and you want to keep an eye on how the prospects in Laval are doing this season, if you haven't done so already, well, please, won't you just tap that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, hit that like button, and of course, share this episode on your favorite social media platforms because we're coming to you every every single week. Every Tuesday, you'll find me here for the Rocket Hockey Report. Every Thursday, you'll find me here for the Habs Hockey Report. And every Monday, you can catch our flagship podcast hosted by Rick Stevens and Michael Spinella called Canadians Connection. You can find that right here every Monday as well. That's our long-form analytical podcast focused solely on the Montreal Canadiens and our good friend Patrick Williams will be joining uh, Rick and Michael there every once in a while as well giving an AHL update and Patrick's Patrick's going to make an appearance here on this show uh, once a month as well to give us his perspective of things going on around the American Hockey League. We are going to have exclusive interviews with prospects in Laval here on the show you're not going to want to miss a minute of it. So tap that subscribe button. And hey, maybe you're new to the channel and you've not had a chance to catch our Habs Hockey Report show. Well, if you haven't, then check out our latest episode right here and I'll see you back here again next Tuesday. Thanks for watching.